one, Green Panda here. Honestly, no one really gives a shit whether I'm boycotting Inktober or not, but I wanted to get this off my chest. As an artist who was looking forward to Inktober, I live in the UK. We don't celebrate Halloween, like, at all. I had less than three trick-or-treaters last year, which is why I'm bummed out about Inktober, but the more I look at it and the whole situation, the more iffy it seems to me. Let's just say the whole drama isn't so black and white, which is why I'm ducking out. I'm just avoiding the crossfire. I personally enjoyed Inktober and saw it as a fun, artsy holiday, but I don't want to pick a side because it's not simple one copy the other. It's legal action type stuff. And you don't know what's going on. Jay can't respond because he could end up making the situation worse, and we just have to wait. But since it's close to Inktober, it's such a bad time. I've watched loads of color videos and I like to believe I know when someone is in the wrong or if cancel culture is manipulating the facts to paint someone as the villain. And that's why the confusion is coming in. Is Jake Parker the villain? Or is Alphonse using this for clout to advertise his own book? Worst part is I did not know what was going on. So I tried to look for someone to explain it and majority of the videos trying to explain what was happening they were biased because they were on Parker's side. Some agree with Alphonse and there wasn't many videos that were neutral and speaking of facts of their opinions changing the perspective. I was going to do that but then this person did it instead. Okay, his name is Dweeblet and I'll leave the video in the description below in case anyone wants to check it out themselves. His video was actually really good and very informative and he had lots more information than I did so I didn't even bother. Okay, Clownfish themselves have also responded and they show a different perspective as they themselves went into trademarking disputes and they shined a light on what could go wrong or what could happen next and it's just legalities, alright, that Alphonse could be slapped with a law case himself for a financial harm against Jake Parker. Jake Parker could probably, you know, get sued by Alphonse for plagiarism and Jake could also be dropped by the publishers because of the controversy and no one might want to work with him ever again. This isn't like a whole, oh he plagiarized, like screw him type of thing. This is like destroying a guy's career and with the internet it's guilty until proven innocent and we'll just have to wait and see. So in case no one wants to watch any videos and just wants a quick gist of it, here's what happened basically, like in the shortest version possible. Jake Trier marked Inktober in 2019 and the lawyers attacked artists with a cease and, desist, cease and desist to stop them from selling their own Inktober drawings that they drew. Jake responded and said he apologised, was aimed at the people who didn't do anything but see, save an image, slap on a t-shirt and sell for their own gain. This has happened to me so I understand it but these people you call pirates, why does that sound familiar? Oh yeah, Yandev called his haters gremlins, that is such a strange coincidence but back on track. He then made an Inktober book that goes into detail about inking and how to ink the tools of the trade, etc. Which isn't a bad thing, but then Alphonse made a 15 minute video going into detail about his book and at first it did seem far fetched but the more you get into it the more you see a lot of similarities and it's impossible for it to be this similar like if you're making your own ink book so it makes you think what what happened so yeah it's a complete legal clusterfuck but artists need to stop taking sides and take a step back and look at this and take note all those kickstarters creating your own content you need to handle it with care and make sure nothing like this happens to you and if it does how do you handle it some people think jake could not explain his inking process without some overlap since alphonse does not own said techniques but in alphonse's video when he's explaining this he is not talking about the techniques at all what you have to focus on is if Jay copied the layout, the phrasing, and the structure. As in how the page is set, how something is described, and if the order of the book looks like Alphonse and from what I've seen. At the beginning some things seem coincidence, I mean I think it was far fetched, but further on in the video you realise that there are so many similarities. I mean if I was making an Inktober book mine would look totally different from Alphonse because you have your own way of how you present things and how you make it yourself. The only thing that'll probably be similar is hatching and cross hatching and how that stuff is you know applied to an image but other than that, other than that yeah Jake is totally fucking lazy and copied. I don't think he plagiarised on purpose, I mean we keep telling kids in uni or college or anything like that that plagiarism is bad. Jake himself is getting involved with copyright legalities, I mean he trademarked Inktober last year. So that would make you think he'd know what he was doing. Why would he do it when he could have just sat down, took his time and work on his book from scratch? No. Some could argue that what Jake did was cryptomnesia. Say for example, comedians who listen to material and find it funny and forget about it then recreate the joke and claim it as their own. 
by accident. Ever draw a character and think they're original and then realize like by someone else that you actually redrew Lara Croft? It can happen. But given the fact that she even posted an excerpt on Alphonse book onto his Instagram, shoots down this idea and makes you think he was purposely being malicious. I mean really, what a way to shoot yourself in the foot. Jake even responded, and the truth is, artists and legalities just shouldn't mix, which is why this is so important. This is a lesson that every artist needs to see. What happens when you do make it, when your work finally gets out there? Suddenly everything you have changes. What is or isn't allowed, and the worst part is, no one knows. Every artist online has their own two cents, boycotting October, congrats. Doing something else but no one else is talking about who is in the right legally? We don't know anything about law and order, no matter how many times you plead your attorney. Do you know copyright laws, trademarks, plagiarism acts, and what is or isn't plagiarism, or what isn't fair use? I mean, even YouTubers are getting attacked by other creators, by copyright strikes, etc. Because we just don't know. Artists need to learn this stuff, and that's what's dumb. You can Google how to draw anime characters, thousands of videos, YouTube, TikTok, Skillshare, etc. will give you plenty. But when you try to look for legal stuff, like basic like bullet points of what you should and shouldn't know, does anyone really know? Unless you actually went through, unless you've been through it yourself and had your own dispute over trademarks, no one has a clue. Not to mention that creative laws change all the time. I think there was a video once that mentioned how someone remade a video game and it was exact, pixel by pixel. The only difference is the colour or slight difference in layout. That game got away with it and got royalties that the original game deserves. Laws change all the time. Sometimes some things look exactly like, and some things look similar, which is the issue with Alphonse. I'm behind him 100%, but what if some lawyer decides that some things that are kind of similar is cause for concern? Thousands of art books would have to be come through, like how draw manga books. How many books give you the same all, here's the utensils you need, how draw anime heads and seven heads make up one body? That is in every single anime book. Is that plagiarism? The lines are blurry and you don't know what's fair use? Or what is exact plagiarism? Truthfully, if this was Jake's first strike, sure. I would think this was a shitty situation and the best cause of action is to wait and see. But this is not the first time and with people like that, it starts becoming a trend. This is where people blame cancel culture and truthfully, I don't think Jake is a villain or needs to be cancelled, it's just an issue. But you're starting to act like a douche so we're calling it out. He did the same thing in 2019 when he trademarked the word but artists suffered. How was that repeating as community that made Inktober a thing in the first place? Dude, anyone can post a bunch of prompts online and have a group of people draw on them. I mean, Mermia, draw this in your style, draw six characters, art style bend, yet none of these guys are trying to trademark it. The publishers are saying they are investigating it and that was back in August 28th, and so far, nothing. The books are already done, thousands of books in print, isn't it too late by now? Also it was a bit quick for Dunn to make a video without reaching out to Jake and the publishers, but on the other hand, he could have been hit with a trigger happy lawyer saying cease and desist, Alphonse could have been promised not to see anything, it could have been investigated and then steamrolled and they could have shown the book anyway and he could be hit with a big fat fine for speaking out about it. You don't know or trust the Galdies and sometimes the system is on your side, sometimes it's not. I mean, how could Dunn message Jake with this? If he showed everything he copied, like as he did in the video, Jake could literally deny the whole thing and it wouldn't have been resolved. Especially since the book's already done and was pulled back. I mean, how could you fix thousands of books that's already printed? How can you revise this? It's kind of impossible. The whole situation is a mess. I don't hear Jake or want to cancel him like the others, I just think He's a dumb guy who did a whoopsie, and Harry Spawn shows his true colours. Also, there's a possibility that it could be the editor's fault, because at the end of the day, when you make a book, especially since he's worked with a publisher, some editors would have been with him and helped him out as well, so you would have think one of them would have either ear said something, or there could be the fact that maybe Jake didn't write the book himself, maybe a ghostwriter did this and they copied, and all Jake did was just hand in the illustrations. Either way, we don't exactly know who's exactly to blame, who's in the fault, who's in the wrong, or what's going on. There could be thousands of reasons. Or then again, the publishers could be in the wrong and could blame Jake. Either way, this is a guy's career that could be screwed over for something wrong. And on one hand, we just don't know if he deserves it yet. Like, if he's, you know, like, if he only gave the illustrations and someone goes for it, this, he doesn't deserve it. But if he himself actually did do this and plagiarised, then yeah, you get what's coming. That's the reason, like, I wouldn't even be bothered with this video or even 
whining about it. It's the fact we're in October's next month, all right? That's the reason, and I don't know what to do. So if I'm gonna do draw timber, it's not because I'm taking sides, it's not because I'm choosing one or the other. It's just the situation itself that I'm avoiding, not the people. Because people are humans, people make mistakes. Truthfully, this video wasn't supposed to be a call out, it wasn't supposed to be like stirring the pot for drama, it wasn't an awareness thing, it wasn't the whole, here, screw this guy, cancel him, Arr. I don't want to be that channel. I do not want to be an artist who is lazy and would rather like criticize other people who others don't really give a shit about. But the only issues I deal with is our community issues and the things I want to talk about instead wasn't about the people. I just want to give context. That's all it is. The whole thing is just context in case people don't know. But yeah, what I actually do want to criticize and talk about is Inktober itself. It has problems and this is what I wanted to talk about and this is what I am going to go through in the video. Some people have voiced their issues with Inktober, something they never would have done previously and if we're going to make a new improved version we should put all the issues on the table and think of better ways to do it. First off, some people online on Twitter said don't draw at all in Inktober and use it as a holiday. Instantly I hate that. I rarely draw at all. I am slow. Or things happen in my life that makes it hard to draw every day. Inktober pretty much kicked me in the ass to get me like to get the ball rolling basically and let me draw shit. But I realised that Inktober to some people isn't fun. Not all artists are masochists like myself. It's even worse when you see other artists post online every single day with a fully fleshed out illustration. No way in hell did they make this detailed illustration one day. Bullshit, I see. Obviously, Inktober prompts are revealed to a select few in August, sometimes a month before. And some sketch out everything in the book and thumbnail these works and then they ink them in October, which is wrong. It takes away the fun, the learning and the creativity of what you can think of on the day. Like what pops in your head and what you draw instantly just to get it out there. That was the point of Inktober. Instead, what it's doing is driving this whole fake illusion that you have to be perfect or draw something every single day. It's actually deteriorating to artists' health because they look at these and think, mine doesn't look like that, it's impossible to draw this every single day, when really they're just not prepared like the others are. And truthfully, if you're already preparing, Two to three months in advance for Inktober, how are you learning about the income process itself? I mean, it's kind of the opposite of what Inktober represents. I mean, I think you should look at artworks that have income processes you like and then experiment with the prompt you have. I fancy using watercolor inking and I want to see with what I could come up with. Then days later, you show your art. Want to keep going, then use hatching. I hate hatching personally and it never works. Using pocket? Fuck yes. And it goes on. Inktober should be about, I don't know, the actual inking process itself than whether or not you made an illustration in black and white on paper. Speaking of paper, I don't understand how some people are trying to like gatekeep what you can and can't do in Inktober. It's so confusing. Like some say it's inking, which means ink. So you have to make an illustration in black and white with ink on paper. Otherwise, it's not Inktober, which I think is stupid because the people who use things use markers. That's alcohol-based ink, but still, it's not exactly ink, is it? If it had a your way, everyone would be using fountain pens or dip pens. The thing is, these tools are the trade. I know some people say you have to use ink, but I thought it was the lack of colour what illustrates what you can and can't do. I mean, being limited to black and white, the techniques used to create shadows, etc., I thought that was inking, regardless of what medium you used. Limited to just paper and pen is unfair for others. Programs can recreate traditional tools, and also it's not what it looks like, it's you learning. I mean, does it really matter what the medium is? Your hand is pretty much recreating patterns, established in a way to create shading. You don't really need pen or paper for this, you could use a computer just fine. It excludes people from participating, so no matter what medium, ink and techniques can be used on any platform. The truth is, is that some people are disabled and need the computer as well for stabilising, so it's actually excluding people from participating in something that's supposed to be about community. How is that fair? Second thing is the prompts. Look, October, Halloween. It is my holiday. I wanted to have the same respect as Christmas. I'm so sick of people getting Christmas shit out in the early October. It drives me nuts, okay? You have November to do that, okay? Get out my store. 
My sister is pagan and the best part is that our birthday months are on solstice, which is amazing, and on pagan holidays. And October is a very important date in the pagan calendar for it marks the feast of the dead. So the prompts for October, the night of the living dead, spooky scary skeletons, witches, ghouls come alive, and the prompt is fish. Are you kidding me? How can I be in a Halloween mood when I'm drawing a fish? Some prompts are okay, but honestly, can anyone go on a random word generator and make these? You're not special. And the next thing is the new trend, is that some people are making their own prompts for October, and that sounds more like community than anything else. Having so many options, ideas, to like recreate, have your own variations. If you don't like someone's prompt, you can go for something else. If you hear Inktober, do somebody else's. You could see it here, Inktober, and I am using this person's prompt. It, it, you know what's great about that? Is that it calls that person out in a good way to see it. Here, check out this artist who did these prompts. Look at all these other artists who's doing these prompts. If anything, it's more exposing each other depending on the prompts you have. I mean, imagine like you're doing Inktober and you look at all these artists and see what they did for their prompts. It's like thousands and thousands of people doing different variations and like different art techniques and that feels more fun than being constrained to just one type of prompt. Personally, I looked at the Draw Torbit like page on Twitter and I do love that page, it's amazing. I mean, look at the profile, look how festive it looks. And the prompts are a breath of fresh air. Only six prompts lengthened out a couple of days and broad enough for interpretation. For example, carvings. You can draw a pumpkin, jack-o'-lantern, or draw people with jack-o'-lanterns for a head, have a tree with a carving face, the possibilities are endless. It lets you breathe, and I love how they prompted it, and I would love to give this one a go this year. After all, Inktober needs revising and some changes should be made. So whether it comes back kicking or if it's gone for good now and people have new prompts, it seriously was made to give artists in their platform access to be seen by others. It's a sense of community and a better experience and learning techniques and that's all it was. It was just all of us learning how to ink together. So depending on what prompts you pick this year, whether you participate or not, is entirely up to you. It's no pressure. You can even draw one picture and call it a day. There's no need to stress. So whatever you choose, I hope you guys have fun in October. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye!